Hi, my name is Nathaniel Carroll, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up the development environment for Avalanche. And I'm going to be taking the Olympus DAO GitHub, and we're going to be chopping that up and diving into it a little bit to see what will go directly over to Avalanche without being changed. And this might be a part one of many, uh, taking you through the entire forking process to develop a local fork of Olympus style. We'll see how things go. Thanks for coming and showing up and let's dive right in. So here is Olympus Dow's homepage, their dashboard. And looking at it, it's really not that interesting. We see some charts, they show you some metrics, that's great. Uh, they're really just showing you the health of the, the protocol. Uh, but the reason that Olympus is such an ideal starting point for a project to fork is because it has a built-in crowdfunding mechanism and you can see in the total value deposited that Olympus is sitting on 503 million dollars USD uh, as a net worth um, you can see the various assets through the different charts but basically this company showed up nine, ten months ago, seven, seven months ago, May, I guess that's seven. So seven months ago, this company shows up, and today they're worth $503 million. That's a lot of growth. That's really quick, and that is our incentive to fork Olympus. We want to be able to try and emulate those numbers as best we can, or even a fraction of those numbers would be super beneficial to any startup that's looking to accrue funding. All right, so we'll be starting with the Medium article that I've got linked below, which I'll use to walk us through this process. And then we also have our virtual machine running a relatively clean install of Ubuntu 20.04. Um, so I've already installed most of the prerequisites on this list, but I'll still walk you through the process and take you through the web page, the links for each page. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is open a terminal. And if you haven't already install your guest edition CD image, it should install pretty easily. And then you're also going to want to make sure to update your repositories, which standard procedure, right? So sudo apt update. Enter your password because you're acting as a super user. And I'll run through all packages that are up to date. We are ready to roll. So Visual Studio Code is the IDE that I recommend. And in order to install that, you're going to go ahead and run sudo snap install dash dash classic code and I've already got it installed so not much happens there but you should see a run through with a little click yet or type a y and hit enter to move forward and then that'll install visual studio code now in order to run that you just go ahead and type code bada bing bada boom brings it up and you're ready to roll so from there, you go ahead and install Node.js. So in order to install Node.js, you are going to run sudo apt install Node.js, which I already got it. And then that should install npm. But if it doesn't install npm, go ahead and run this command just to make sure. And that's going to be sudo apt install npm. So sudo apt install npm. I've already got it installed. So we'll go ahead and move forward. Uh, and then the next tool that you're going to want to install is known as nvm. So nvm allows you to easily switch through the various versions of Node.js. As you can see here, I've got 10.19 installed. But then you install nvm using this command here. And that runs for the install strip uh, script. So Go ahead and copy and place, copy and paste that. 
And then it gets it. And then I've already run the install script, so I really don't want to run it again. Um, but once you do have it installed, you should be able to go ahead and type nvm dash dash version, and it'll tell you which version of nvm you're running. So if you'd like to see the installed versions of Node.js that you have, you would run nvm. Um, I believe it's ls, and yes, that is the proper command. So here you can see that I've got version 14 installed, version 17 installed. I've got the system default set to 17, and then I've also got a variety of other versions installed that came with it. <clears throat> that was a mouthful. The next tool you're going to use is called yarn. And Yarn is a, a package manager. So, you know, installing, building, it's got a little lock feature, which is very nice. Uh, but we won't be using that here, not now. So, you add the repository, which I did not add the repository, but you still have it. So you're going to run sudo apt install yarn and it should come up with that, right? So then you hit yes. I'm going to hit no because I must have installed it from a different source. I know I have it. It works. <laughs> uh -huh. But then in order to check that, you go ahead and hit yarn version. And yeah, so you can see I've got 1.225, uh, which is slightly older than the one from the tutorial, but that's okay. Newer is usually better anyhow. The next tool that you're going to need is called Golang, and that is a language that was developed by Google uh, around 2011, and it just kind of, it took, it wound up taking off, I suppose. We're going to use it for Avalanche. Not, we're not really using it a whole lot. We just need to be able to read it and compile it. So you're going to run this command, wget, yada, yada, yada. Just copy it. And then if you have your, as I mentioned earlier, your guest edition CD, you should be able to paste it right in. And then you're going to want to make sure to append your go path to your path. And you do that by running this command here. And it basically just resets the variable path such that it's the current variable of path and uh, user local go bin, which is where most of your go tools are going to be stored. So then once you've done that, you can check the version of go by typing go version. And you can see there I've got 1.17, which is newer than the one that is in the tutorial. So then after that, you're going to want to go ahead and navigate to your working directory. All right. So in order to navigate, well, I've made a nice little folder in which I intend to keep all of our projects. So I'm going to go ahead and open this and Visual Studio Code, right? So that way we can manipulate it all from right there. Okay, so you can see that I've already <laughs> installed most of the tools that we're going to need, but I'm going to go ahead and go through this as if we were going through it together step by step. So make directory, and we're going to call it take two, just because. Right, so now we're going to go ahead and ls that, and I'm going to cd take2. So now we've changed it such that take2 is our active directory. So from here, we're going to run git clone, and because I don't want to run this command a bunch of different times, I'm going to go through, and I'm going to do it for every GitHub that we need to do. So you're going to click the little green button, 
and you're going to hit that button to copy it. And let's make sure I'm in the right spot here. So clone space. And then the nice thing about this with Visual Studio Code is that your hotkeys work. So Control Shift V is your paste. And that paste in our first repository that we need to copy. That's Avalanche Go. And Avalanche Go is what allows you to connect to the Avalanche network as a node. So it basically contains the code inside of it for spooling up a single node. And then you need to use dot scripts build slash sh to initialize it right so i'm gonna go ahead and install it and we'll let it run its course sometimes this can take a little bit of time given the size of these tools so let's just let that do its thing all right so now we can go ahead and navigate to get inside of it so cd well, let's see what it's called first. So ls and no cap. So cd avalanche go. And now we're inside of it. So I'm going to adjust this a little bit. All right. There we go. Looks a little bit better. So anyways, now we're inside of it, right? So we're going to run bot slash scripts slash build dot sh right and i've already done this but it doesn't matter i can do it again ah, it's scripts it's plural right so now it's going to go ahead and run through that and do what it needs to do and while that's doing that let's go ahead and Get it on that. Lovely. But anyhow, so the next tool that we're going to need is a bash. And a bash allows us to connect not only the one node that Avalanche Go allows us to create, but it allows us to create for at least four other nodes and connect those. So we're going to go ahead and copy the Avash code. And we're going to come back and we're going to change it such that active directory is our take two directory, right? So ls should just be avalanche go. And then we're going to go ahead and get clone control shift p. And then it clones a bash, right? So we can scroll down and. cd avash and then go ahead and run go build so then it does its thing right and from here you're gonna run dot slash avash yes and then so within the avash uh, within the Avash tool, it opens its own little script there, right? So let me yes, that's the one I want. I want take two. Nope, we just want take two. There we go. Um, and then we'll go ahead and hit control tilde to bring this back up. Navigate back into a bash. And let's go ahead and do that again. So it was dot slash a bash. Yes, and that takes us into here. So from here, 
you're going to want to open up this and you're going to go to scripts and it's five node staking dot LUA. So we'll go ahead and open that. So I've got the name right there, but you're going to want to type in the command run script and then it's going to be scripts slash five node staking dot lua so you're going to go ahead and run that it's not going to say anything or at least not for me you'll have to do a little bit of configuration there but then from there you're going to want to go ahead and type proc manager and run it just so I can get a little bit of help here because I forgot what the, I think it's the list. Yeah, so proc manager list. And then from here, you can see that everything is running. Health, max, blah, blah, blah. Let's see if we can make this a little prettier. It's not that pretty, but basically this is saying that it's running well. <laughs> it's doing its thing, right? So from there, I'm just going to go ahead and X out that staking Lua, right? Um, we're going to go ahead and launch the smart contracts, right? Or the smart contract right now because we've already got our Avash set up, right? So we're going to go ahead and create a new one. Uh, we'll do that one on that half. We'll do this one on that half. Cut it a little closer. Right, so you're going to want to download and install the Olympus DAO contracts, which is under this part right here. So prerequisites right under hard hat, you can see smart contracts. And I didn't cover hard hat because you don't have to install it. It's, it's we'll cover, we'll get there, I promise. So you're gonna get a code, hit copy. And I'm back in our second one, we're gonna say git clone and then control shift V and that'll go through and copy our Olympus contracts. I think it's going to be wiser time-wise for me to go ahead and just uh, go ahead and take that one and that one. And we also need that one. And we need to copy. Boom. Slide. Yep. All right, so those are migrating. And while those migrate, I'm going to go ahead and discuss what we're going to do here. So you're going to go to the Avalanche uh, Quick Start contract, which is in the bottom of the Thing, bottom of the tutorial and you're going to steal the hardhat.config.ts which for me is right here but, so this is still running I didn't realize I was still running <laughs> um, but yeah so while this is running, go ahead and get the Olympus contracts, the Avalanche smart contract quick start, and the Olympus back end or uh, front end. So let me clean these up while that copies over. And this is for Avash, yes. So drop that. This is hard hat, which we will get back to, like I said. So anyhow the standard procedure, right? So git clone and then copy and paste the repository for the contracts. 
the quick start and the front end. So I just copied and pasted mine over. Uh, you can see that right here. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out that command and we're going to ls seal my active directory is we're going to cd avalanche go or avalanche smart contract quick start damn it spell that right yeah so we're gonna ls it right and boom right there hardhat.config.ts so we're gonna run this command called copy right so we're gonna cp hardhat.config.ts and then we're going to copy that to root home yeah it's going to let me pull, pull this up for a second it's going to be computer and then, yeah, home, I think. Okay, so for me, that's going to be slash home slash Nathaniel slash desktop slash local project slash avalanche. Oh boy, it's a lot of typing. Ranch projects. Yeah. Slash take two slash. Olympus dash contracts. Okay, basically, you're just going to copy and paste this hardhat config.ts from Avalanche smart contracts all the way to Olympus contracts, right? Um, and then once it's there, go ahead and find it, right? So it's right here. And then you can see that this is from Avalanche because it says Fuji and AVAX, you know, all Avalanche signs. So we know that that, worked, that command I just ran ran properly. And then in here, you're going to come to this little version section because that is the pragmas of solidity that uh, Hardhat will run. And Come back to our tutorial. You can see that we need 0 0.75, 0 0.89, and 0 0.81. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this here. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab the comma to control C it. Uh, and control V it. Will be. Okay, so there's 0.7. I'll make this 0.75. I'll make this 0.80. This can be 0.89. Actually, we'll make this 0.810. And then we'll copy, we'll paste the other one in right there. 
And this one here is what we will make. Version 8.9. Okay. And then you're going to go ahead and hit Control S. You're just going to save it. And you can close that out. You can just walk away. Right? So. <clears throat> from there, we're going to go ahead and because I'm going to want space, I'm going to type clear. Clear it all out. And we're going to cd dot dot, and now we're in take two. So if we're going to go into our Olympus contracts, which should, yes, okay. So then ls, beautiful, we're in the right spot. So now that we're here, we're going to go ahead and type yarn compile. And what that's going to do is it just compiles the code. It reads through the hard hat compilation file and everything else. It's going to tell us some garbage about, oh, this stuff isn't supported, but it'll work. We're doing this all locally. It's okay. So it's doing its job, doing its thing. Bada bing, bada boom. Solidity compilation finished successfully, done in 22.7 seconds. Excellent. So, we've got this running here. I don't know if clear works, but let's run it and see. It doesn't. So, proc manager list. Let's make sure. View false index, blah, blah, blah. Health, max outstanding requests, uh, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> Pardon me. All seems to be about in place. So, then you're going to run the command npx. Hard hat run, and then it's going to be the path to the um faucet from where you are. So I'm going to open up my take two. I got to find, okay, so I'm under that. Go to contracts, deployments, my bad. And you're going to go to localhost because we're launching to ourselves. And we're going to take this ohm faucet dot JSON. And we're going to copy path. And we're going to run that bad boy with the control shift V. So paste the path. And then from there, you're going to tell it with a double dash network to find our local network. And then we're going to hit run. It'll look for it. It's got to find the local network. It's got to do some stuff. Oh, yes. What was the problem here? Unrecognized positional argument for more information. Show stack traces. Where was it? Did I run the wrong one? I don't think so. Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to uh, I need to go ahead and adjust my node options, I think. So I'm gonna have to run this command here. Oh, control shift, my bad. Run it. And then let's try that one again. Double in. Hold on. Okay, team, I am back and I just did a silly. Please pardon me. So, in the complexities of my path, I've got a space, which is fatal for just about any Unix project, right? So as you can see, I've got a space right here between Avalanche and projects. And it was a problem earlier when I was trying to find, just copy and paste all these files. Um, 
But anyways, whenever you have a space in your path, make sure that you need to put uh, quotations around it such that it's read as a single command. That said, run it. And it'll take its time. Blah, 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 blah. But it should deploy without a hitch. And it won't give us any instructions saying that, oh, yes, I deployed happily. It's just going to move to the next, right? But then from there, you can actually go into your Avash network and you can go into your process manager. And if you do that proc manager list command again, you should be able to see under, if you have a bigger screen, I'm working with like two and a half inch square right here. But if you have that on a bigger screen, you should be able to see not only the contract, but the five nodes that are running as well uh, as it is a process within the blockchain. So that will conclude our launching of the contract section um, and we'll go I'll clean things up and then we'll go ahead and move on to the front end all right so <clears throat> I went ahead and cleaned things up a little bit uh, navigated back to my take two directory and I also went ahead and pulled up the visual fork section of the tutorial so since I'd copied it over the front end already, we're going to go ahead and pop it open and we're going to look at it. So we're going to migrate to it in our active directory there. So we're going to cd Olympus front end. Yes, yes. All right, so then from there we're going to go ahead and type ls. And from here, you'll be able to see your full list of uh, documents within the front end. Uh, I'm reading through it right now. I'm looking for the ENV. Oh, it's hidden. It starts with a dot, so it's hidden. Um, There we go. So typing ls a is the all, so it tells it to show the hidden. There it is. By that. Boom. Okay. So that's the file that we're looking for right there. That dot env dot example, and that's your environment file. So it tells the front end how to launch things. Um, and I've already done the step to create the new one, but I'm going to go ahead and remove the old one. So remove dot env and then, yeah, should just remove it, right? So we run the ls slash a and perfect. So you can see that the dot env file, this one, is no longer present because I removed it with that command. Pardon me. So what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna run the cp. And you're going to copy the example environment. Example to just dot env, the file I removed, right? So then you're going to run that ls a again, and we're going to make sure. So there it is, it's back. <laughs> Love to see it. And then from there, you're going to go ahead and run yarn. You're not going to do yarn build, yarn install, yarn compile, nothing. Just yarn. Boop. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. Oh, lovely. <laughs> okay, so anyhow, it runs through, it compiles, it does its thing. Um, I do not know what Husky is, but I guess that installed on its own, and that's cool, whatever. 
So from there, you're going to go ahead and run yarn start. Um, my bad, team. <laughs> we just ran that command. I'm so sorry. But that's okay. It doesn't mess anything up. It just goes through the same process. <clears throat> and then another thing to make note of while we wait for that to do its thing, you're going to want to open this link that I've got in the tutorial because there is a chance that the launch will fail, uh, but I already ran that command in order to make the contracts launch to the local network uh, previously. So my current session is up to date and already running that command. But then from here, you're going to run yarn start. Right, and that's going to launch on the local host, and it should bring us to a local version of the Olympus style landing page. Um, my virtual machine's a little slow, my Wi Fi is a little slow, my computer's fast, but that's the only reason that I run virtual machines. So, Yeah, so while that runs and does its thing, um, I'll go ahead and discuss a couple of things that should be made note of. Uh, I discuss here that you should run NVM install 14.17.0, and I say that because it is helpful to have version 14, as that is the version of Node.js that Olympus was written with. Um, and this is taking its sweet time. Why are we running too far? It's okay. Just do your thing, buddy. Do your thing. We'll go ahead and make that one that side of the screen. We'll make up that side of the screen. This is taking a very long time. I'm not quite sure why. I uh, I don't want to pause the video and then just come back and be like, ha I got it working. And then you guys are like, well, what if you did something? You know, I'm not doing anything. We're just waiting. We are just waiting. I'm going to try and run this command again. Something's going wrong here. And just for the record, uh, control C, super useful, cancels anything. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and run clear. I like having clear spaces. And we're going to run run start again. And then it should pull up a new Mozilla window. And it's connecting to local host, so that's the right spot. I really don't have much patience, so I apologize for this. Um, hmm. Okay, well, maybe it's not going to launch for me. That's, that's, that's frustrating. Maybe third time's the charm. I'll give it a go. Hopefully I can, my editor can kind of take some of this out. But let's go ahead and do yarn. Let's just run yarn. And we'll compile it, and then we'll run yarn start. Okay, 
so now it's going to start. Now they're back to back. Run that back. Fourth time is a charm. Alright, I didn't even look at the clock, but it is now 11.50, so it took about seven minutes to load this. Um, did it through a virtual machine, I know that played into it, because I'm also recording this and everything else. But I went ahead and maximized the screen. So anyways, here you can see our local fork of Olympus style. We've got all the fun little dashboard. Obviously none of this is going to be pop- oh wow, it is populated. Interesting. Oh, I didn't, I didn't modify the environment file, so it connected to their uh, Alchemy APIs. Uh, but that's okay. That might be why it took so long to boot. Huh. Huh. Anyhow, so here it is. Uh, if you were to modify any of the code contained within the Olympus front end code, uh, you'd be able to see those modifications in your locally launched version. And so here we are. That's your local front end and your solidity contracts were deployed or your contract was deployed so i do believe that that'll kind of bring things to a close here for today so yeah that was kind of a quick little run through of deploying a contract out of the many many contracts within olympus style and i also went over how to test and deploy a front end such that you can interact with that and modify it to suit, you need, suit the needs of your app that you're trying to develop. Uh, I hope you found this video useful and please leave a comment, like, subscribe, whatever. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I should make more parts of this and continue with developing an Olympus fork on Avalanche. You know, That could be a fun project to follow through with. So while I was reviewing my footage uh, to see what I had going on, I noticed that in the chaos I forgot to cover Hardhat. So Hardhat is an Ethereum development environment, and it allows you to deploy not only to the Ethereum mainnet, but you, as you saw with our tutorial, you can use it to interact with Avalanche. Um, I also believe that it works with Solana and another blockchain. 
uh, regardless. I'm a noob developer, so I'm not going to know it all. But it will install on its own. You don't necessarily have to go out of your way to install it in the beginning. You can install it on the fly as you use uh, Yarn and Yarn Compile and start working with the blockchain. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching.